Kyle came to school this morning. The, um, Kyron. Kyron came to school this morning. He's seven years old with his stepmom for the science fair. He was wearing this outfit. Well, Steph, the sheriff's they department walked launched a massive search within an hour of learning that Kyron was missing. The Since FBI then. is also on scene. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five. Kyron. We're gonna we're gonna bring you home, buddy. Uh -huh. Nothing is more important to your family, to your friends, to us, so. Police are not releasing a lot of details except to say the case is now a criminal investigation. I was fully expecting them to just slap the cuffs on her and take her away. They're going to do it any second. They're, they're, they're going to take her away. They're going to do it. Here we go. This is going to happen and it doesn't work that way. If you have seen Kylan or have any information you think may be beneficial, please call Portland Police. Kyron was due home off the school bus at 345. He did not get off the bus. And have they found any sign of him at all? No, not that I've heard of any sign of him at this point. Seven-year-old Kyron Horman was last seen after his stepmother, Terry Horman, and there's his picture, drove him to school for one of the biggest days of the year, the school science fair. The second grader at Skyline Elementary had worked hard on his project for the science fair. This is a picture she took of the second grader with his project, the red-eyed tree frog. After touring exhibits together, they say goodbye in the school hallway. She leaves for home. Kyron heads toward his classroom. It's the last time anyone remembers seeing him. Terry Horman posts photos of Kyron from the science fair on her Facebook page. Kyron doesn't get off the school bus. His stepmom calls the school and learns the teacher had marked him absent. This is devastating for the family, as you might guess, and for anybody that knows him. We just want to make sure he gets home safe. By 9 o'clock, as we watch search teams wade through high, grassy fields, Kyron had been missing more than 13 hours. Police declared the area a major crime scene. By morning, the military and crews on the ground joined the search. He's not the kind of child that would just go out of school and just go, you know, searching or wandering around. He's just a very timid, sweet boy. Okay. Are you guys ready? All right, let me know. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Jason Gates. I'm a captain with the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, and I'm the incident commander. In addition to the teams in the sky and on the ground, we're told about 50 detectives are also working the case. The focus, the area around the school. We're moving forward under the premise that we're looking for a, a living Kyra Norman. On this rainy Sunday, police interviewed parents and children at Skyline School. They're just trying to talk the kids through and just see if they can pick up any grains of information that they can to help, just to help. The search turned into a massive community effort. From homemade signs to food donations, those who couldn't search did what they could to help. Then on Friday, one week after Kyron's disappearance, his family speaks publicly for the first time. Kyron, we miss you, we love you, and we need you home right now. Search crews made their strongest push yet, with hundreds of volunteers from around the state joining the search for Kyron Horman. We need a clue, we need that, that aha. This is the kind of terrain searchers are having to comb through tall grasses, dense vegetation, and steep slopes. It makes for a slow and tedious process. The pressure to turn up something intense, as so far each day has ended with little to report. It's, it's always frustrating, you know, when we're not finding anything, especially when we have such high hopes. Investigators suspended the search and rescue. It's become clear Kyron is not simply lost. Would he just go on a hike? At the end of the year, that doesn't seem it's like something he would do. Detectives announced this has become a criminal investigation. And the focus? Where is she and, and why is she not speaking? We wanted to speak out as the natural parents for Kyron. Behind the scenes, we'd later learn suspicions were mounting. His family had come apart. Terry was on a whole nother playing field than we were. Um, it was three against one, and um, she was not looking out for Kyron. She was not interested in helping in any way. 
Weeks after Kyron disappeared, police are handing out a questionnaire to parents and students at Skyline School. Asking people if they'd seen the stepmom or the family's white truck in the area the day the boy disappeared. Investigators say they've talked with the majority of parents and staffers, but there's still people they want to interview. Then... Hello, I'm Tracy Barrett. And I'm Joe Don. The, the unexpected. The Kyron Horman investigation takes another turn. Now a reliable source tells News Channel 8 officers were prepared to arrest stepmom Terry Horman for hiring a hitman to kill her husband. Kane Horman filed for divorce, sought a restraining order against Terry Horman, and accused her of trying to hire a hitman to murder him. And it was uh, based on a lot of information that was provided, so it wasn't a sudden, uh, say, reactionary type of decision that was made. At that same news conference, Kyron's dad revealed another behind-the-scenes bombshell about Terry. I think everyone knows the fact that she's taken her two polygraphs. Um, she has not passed those two polygraphs. Terry Horman hired a defense lawyer and moved to her parents' home in Roseburg. Now again, Terry Horman has not been named a person of interest or a suspect in this case. Terry Horman has never spoken to the media, but in court documents calls Kane's allegations vicious and calculated to inflame and poison public opinion against her. Court papers from the divorce revealed Terry Horman had been sexting with another man after Kyron disappeared. She's got some guts. I'll give her that. Now's not a good time to be doing stuff like that, but I guess I, I don't expect anything less. Edie, are you cooperating with investigators? By late summer, a grand jury started hearing sworn testimony from Terry Horman's friends. No charges were filed. Is she bound to testify or could she, could she uh, say no? She was subpoenaed. I look at people's actions, and the actions I see don't reinforce the fact that, Terry, that they're, that they're completely they're innocent. Um, and whether it's related to Kyron or not, something's being hidden. Two years after the boy's disappearance, Kyron's biological mother filed a civil lawsuit against Terry Horman, later dropped. The time has come for Terry to take responsibility for what she has done and to tell me and my family where Kyron is and how he got there. Terry Horman tried to change her name and appeared on the witness stand before a judge denied the request. Kyron Horman is missing. He needs to be found. I love my son. I want him home more than anything. Terry, what's your reaction to the judge denying this name change? Hi, Kyle. No, thank you. Horman, who now lives in California, has maintained her innocence, appearing on national TV and magazines. She talks about Kyron's disappearance and also what she calls a bogus murder-for-hire plot to kill her husband. I don't believe she'll ever be truly honest about what happened. I think even when we find Kyron, she will not reveal what happened that day. But the search for him is still going strong. Today, another well, under the radar ready. search today for Kyron Horman. Police searched the woods, the water, and multiple properties over the years, but haven't found anything. Comment. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office said, quote, the investigation is continuing. And quote. They've also released age-progressed we'll photos of what Kyron would look like now as a teenager. Kyron is a sweet little boy that just wanted to live his life and to go camping and fishing and be a kid and he got that taken from him.